So in this lesson, we're going to look at animating the enemy. So this involves us converting the enemy from a normal sprite to an animated sprite, then adding the extra images to that animated sprite, then setting the animated sprite to play, so it's always playing. Then we're going to create um, an animation for the player so that it moves across the screen to make it a bit harder to kind of or be harder for the player to avoid. And then finally, we're just going to create a script to activate that movement. So it should be fairly simple. Um, so let's have a look at this. So so far, then our sprite is all set up, and if we collide with him, he it will it will deduct us a point. But it's very static; it just stays in one place. So if we head on over to the enemy scene here and what we're going to do is we're going to click on this sprite and by right clicking on it and we're going to change the type. The type that we want is going to be an animated sprite. So if you don't see it in this window here, just type animated. Animate and it's the animated sprite. Now from here it's going to say look you need to set up your, your first frame for your animation. So click on the drop down button and say new sprite frames. And then you can just click on this window again and it will bring up this, this bit here. You can leave it to default. So if you wanted to transition between movements we'd add more here. But we're just going to leave it on default and just keep it really really simple. So let's come up to our enemy tile. So where are you here? Enemies. And scroll down to our one so we want this one here and this one here so if we just click on that and drag it in and then do the same with this one fantastic the speed is going to be five frames per second which is absolutely fine and it's set to loop which is on um, so this is pretty much it the only other button we've got to do here is click on the sprite and turn it to play so if we turn it to play now when we let's just save it quickly now when we go to the actual level um, you'll see that it, it does the movement and that's the first part complete so really really simple and it just it makes the game a little bit better to look at and visually it kind of makes it a bit more threatening so from now we just need to move around a bit so we're just going to create a really simple action where it just moves in a linear path backwards and forwards okay to make it a little, a little harder for the player to avoid so now we've got that done let's create an animation player so we click on this top node and then click on the plus and what we want is an animated player so let's click up here again or an animation player sorry let's see if we can find this animation player there it is so we click on animation player now from here we're going to have this blank window so we need to start our first animation so we do that by clicking on this button here and I'm going to call mine um, enemy moving we are going to link to this oops we are going to link to this name later so just be very aware that whatever you call it we are going to be linking to so we can call it enemy moving and then press OK so all we want to do is just move it a little way across the screen. You don't want to make massive leaps, okay? Now, it's important to know that if you try and move the position of this top node, it will fix itself to this position, and that's not what we want, okay? So we're going to come into the sprite, and we're going to move it from here, okay? So the one we want is transform. So now we've got everything set up, we're just going to click the key, because the first position we want is this zero position. So click the key first and then press create new lane. So that gives us our sprite position. Now we want the animation to last probably something like three seconds. So backwards and forwards in three seconds. So where it says length, just change that to three and then press enter. Now, actually let's make it, let's make it four and then press enter. So then we can come, we can move our playhead. So just by clicking it, you get this blue line. We'll move it to two. Now on this position, before we press the key again, we just need to change the value. So we're going to change it to say, let's say 200. It's probably a bit big, but let's just say 200. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to press the key. That will set it. Notice that the collision has stayed behind. So we are going to have to animate that as well in a second. So now let's move the playhead on to four seconds. And let's just change this position back to zero. Press enter and then press the key to set it. So our movement now will go like that. 
Okay, if you want this to play all the time, you need to set this loop button up. So let's just click the loop and then you can just press play and it will loop over that whole passage backwards and forwards. Okay, so far so good. Now, if we just come back to that first one here, we're going to set up the direction of the face, okay? Because when he's when he's moving forward, the face needs to be looking the other way. So if we say flip H here, you'll notice that it changes the position of the face. So if I just zoom in, you'll see that a bit better. Okay. So we're going to turn flip H on, and then we're going to press the play button, or press the key button. Then we're going to create a new lane. So now we've got this flip H lane. So now it's moving forward. So as we scroll through, you can see it's facing the right way. Now we're going to add another key here. Before we do, turn off flip H, and then press the key again. Now it's going to go back the right way. And let's just do the same with this one here. So let's just turn on the flip H and then press the key. So there we go. We've got the right animation. If we just press play again, and you'll notice that when it's going off to the right and then when it's coming off to the left, it faces the right direction. So that's just a nice little stylistic thing. Right, so we've got one more lane to add. So let's move this back to the beginning. Um, always make sure it's on the beginning before you start a lane, otherwise that can cause a few issues. Now, we're going to click on this collision shape 2D this time, and we're going to set the position up again here. So go to transforms, and now let's just make sure this is zero, and zero, press enter. Now, we're on, we're on frame one, it's all zero, press the key. Then it says create this new lane, so we've got the new lane, let's move forward. And let's do this again. So it was 200 that we moved it by. And it does have to match up to where the sprite is. So press enter and then press the key again. Now the last little bit, so, so it moves with it. We just need to do one more here. Um, and it's gonna be zero. So we're gonna press the key again and we're all good. So everything moves along with it, which is absolutely great. You won't see that at the moment if you um, enter your screen because we do need to press the play on it, but this is what it's gonna look like. The wings are flapping and the face moves left and right and it goes backwards and forwards forever. Okay, so that's great. Let's just put it on the beginning button. Now we just need to update our script for the final step. We just need to update our script. So come back into the enemy and press the script button. Now above um, this function that we created before, we're just gonna add a ready function. So we're gonna say func underscore ready. Okay, open close brackets, oops. Open close brackets and then a colon. Once we've got that, we're gonna call the sprite and the animation that we want to play. So the animation player, or the, the, the animation we wanna call is this one here, it's called animation player. Now in go.3, we can just say dollar sign and then call up the animation player just by clicking on this or typing it in. And then we wanna say dot and then the function that we want, which is play, play the animation. So we're just gonna say play. Okay, and then we need open and close brackets. And then inside of these inside of these open and close brackets, we need to call up the name of our animation that we'd like to play. So mine's called an, um, enemy moving. So in order to call that, I just have speech marks. And inside of the speech marks, I call up enemy moving. Now it does need to represent exactly the same way that it's spelt with the space and all the lowercase characters. So if you've got yours spelt with uppercase E, you do need to keep that into consideration. So let's say enemy, and even if you spelt it wrong, you do need to do it exactly the same way. So for some reason I've got cap lock on. Let's try it one more time. Enemy space moving. Okay, now let's save everything out. Table scenes. Now, all being well, when we come in, we should have an animated player that we can collide with, or an animated enemy that we can collide with. So let's have a look at this. And it broke. It says non existent animation player does not exist. So, why does animation player not exist? Oh, it's because it's uppercase. Okay, sorry. I have, for some reason I hit the hit the cap lock. There we go. Let's try that one more time. Okay, touch wood, here we go. Press that and we're in. Now when we move forward a little way, there's our character. So we can jump over the character. Oh, when he goes quite a bit further that way. So here we go. And we miss him. Or if we if we click in with him, 
that when he runs into us, it will kill us or it will reduce our health. So there you go. Um, and it makes it look a little bit more interesting. If you're not happy, like for instance here, I don't see the point in him going all the way under. And you can also move him up and down if you want. Um, you can just animate those properties. So the one thing I want to do is come into level one and this one here, I just want to move him over. So if I click on this, I'm, I'm going to need to lock down this background because I'm going to end up moving that first. So come into this one here, and I'm just going to move him over to about there, and then press play. And hopefully that should visually be a bit better for me. Press start. Press collect. There we go. And he killed me off. Fantastic. Okay, so get your enemy animated and I'll see you in the next lesson.